So if I go to Vero 9, we're welcome with the, uh, the home screen and you can jump into any part of your network here. I mean, you can have a look at the network map or just VMware NSX or SD-WAN, uh, all the top trends, the flows, all of that. But in the, for the purpose of this demo, I'm going to stick to the application part. So if I open up the, uh, the applications, I get a list of all the apps that are in our environment. So I'm going to be focusing on the, uh, the e-commerce app here. And I just want to have a look at what is communicating to this, this, this application. So I focus the e-commerce app here, and then you can see the lines being drawn to these other applications. So it's talking to the Tensor T's, to the HR records, to the, uh, the top video uh, application, etc., etc. I can also dive a little bit more deeper and open up the application dashboard. So this dashboard will show you everything network and, and security related to this application. Starting off with a summary of uh, everything that's going on. Um, Fear and I also does a bunch of health checks and operational checks against the network and security uh, parameters. So if there's something wrong, it raises that event and then you can use that and, and, and fix the, uh, the problem. It also has, has an overview of the, uh, the incoming traffic, the outgoing traffic, you can see there's a major bump in both incoming and outgoing traffic in this app. So that might mean that it's either just being used or there, there's been a problem with this. We can also see the, uh, the raw flows. So if we want to want to dive into the actual network traffic, you can open up that one. And then where is the traffic originating from? So which countries are sending and receiving traffic from this app? And then the makeup of this app. So which VMs are in here, which physical IP addresses, and which Kubernetes are. Maybe a little bit more interesting is the, is the application topology. So this is an interactive widget where you can see the, uh, the network traffic going between these, these different tiers. And if I zoom in a little bit, I can actually see the flows per VM also. So on a higher level, it looks at tier communication. And then if you zoom in, it, you can see the actual communication between the objects within those tiers. So there's the traffic that flows through this, uh, through this app, but it also correlates every single VM towards the underlying network devices that are actually hosting this app. So we can see that there's a network bubble here, which we can open up and then see the network components that are servicing, making sure that this app is actually online. It's, it's actually working. So in this case, we've got a bunch of Cisco Fabric and Connect. We also have Cisco, Cisco Nexus in this environment, and you can see all of them have some type of problem. You can zoom in a little bit more and then get a list of the switchboards table, all the switchboards that are connected to that, uh, to that switch. We can also have a look at the problems. So in this case, we have a link MTU mismatch. This means that Fionai has detected that on one switchboard on this device, the MTU is set to something. And let's just have a look at what that actually is. So in this case, you can see that the MTU on this switch is set to a jumbo frame. And then the MTU on a physical NIC that's attached to the switch is set to something else, to 1600 in this case. So those should typically match. So Fionai highlights that it's a collaboration issue within your environment. So moving on to some, some more details of this, uh, this application, you can see the, all the environments where it's hosted, the uh, vCenters, uh, all of the network and conversion changes inside this app. So VMs that have had their firewall rule changes for their NSX policy, for example, or maybe we've just seen some conversion changes within this, uh, this VM, or maybe their IP address changed, which is also an event that, that Free and I covers. So all of these can be uh, can be found there. We also have some what new analytics. So what has changed in the last 24 hours? Where you can see the incoming traffic, outgoing traffic, uh, which you saw below uh, above. But we can also see the dropped flows. So if there's a flow that's being blocked by a NSX firewall, for example, we will see the dropped flows increasing here. If it's a dynamic application, you could see the uh, the members, uh, the dynamic members going up and down. And then there's a bunch of network information related settings here. 
external services exit in the last 24 hours. So every single network service that has gone from this app to something else. So either the internet or some other applications. Luckily, there's no services being exited from the internet to this app because that would mean we, will, we would have a breach within the firewall, so that's good. Uh, and then we have a brief overview of all the, uh, the ports that are being used for this app in the last 24 hours. As you can see, DNS is the top used port in this, uh, this environment. We can drill down into the, the flows, so who's the most active within this application. So you can see this VM is uh, by far the most active with a couple of gigabytes and the other ones just a couple of MBs. We have firewall rule counters, so uh, every single firewall rule in the environment, and then the amount of traffic that goes through them. And this comes just a bunch of default rules. And if you want to get a little bit more visual on how this traffic is flowing in this application, you can have a look at the security planner. So in this case, you can see the global load balancer is talking to a lot. So it's uh, receiving traffic from this, uh, this application layer, plus also the, uh, the web layer. It's uh, talking to the internet. It's receiving traffic from the, uh, the virtual infrastructure. This could be other applications, VMs, or maybe even VDI. And there's a lot more here. But before I get sidetracked, let's go back to how do we get those applications into VDI. So here's the, this is the list where I started, but we also have this Discover tab here. So here are all of these options that I talked about before. So you can do the tag-based application discovery service now, pull down the name naming convention. And there's also an advanced tab where you can combine multiple discovery methods into one. So if you want to grab the application name from the naming convention and then grab the tier from a tag, you can do that within the advanced. But let's focus on the flow-based application discovery. So this is a list that forms automatically from the output of the flow-based app uh, application discovery algorithm. So all I did is I set it, discover all the VMs, discover the network traffic on all the VMs, and then give me a list of the applications that result of that machine learning. So you can see there's a bunch of apps here, uh, but let me just drill down into one example. So we have this, this NSX uh, load balancer demo app here with three tiers, the application tier, the web tier, and the database tier. And you can see that it resolves into these VM names. So this is automatically. So I've not done anything in advance except deploy this app and then the flow-based application discovery did its thing and then it presented me with this. So if you feel that this is a, a proper applica application, you can just hit the save button and it's, it goes into the system. But then also, Fearless Operations can benefit from this discovery method because that application will flow through in all the way into VROPS. So if I go to Fearless Operations, I can go to Environment and then the Applications page just to get a list of all the applications that are here. And we can see that there are a bunch of applications prefixed with VR9 here. These are the applications that have been discovered within VR9 and then streamed towards VROPS. So let's have a look at that e-commerce app that we've, uh, that we've shown earlier. So you can see it has three tiers. It has seven VMs, which we also saw in the, uh, the VR9 dashboard. But I want to get a, uh, I'm visual, so I want to get a little bit more better overview of how that actually looks. So we've got the, uh, the integrated Network Insights management pack here, which then delivers the VRNI e-commerce app. Then we've got the tiers here, and we've got underneath the tiers, we actually have the VMs. And then you can drill down all the way down to the VM itself and then see the surrounding objects there. So the data store is here, the, uh, the host, the networking uh, object, everything is here. And you can drill down into the data store and then have a look at that specific data store view and see which VMs are hosted on it, which hosts are connected to it, etc., etc. So this, this view comes from VRNI, but then it gets merged into the context that Fearless Operations already has. 
So another added benefit of the integration between Realize Operations and Realize Network Insight is that we get those alerts. So let me show you those alerts in a different demo. Okay, so in this demo, I'm actually going to be playing the role of the VI admin who uses Realize Operations as their primary tool in order to monitor and troubleshoot the environment. But I wanna get some, some information around the network. So let's, let's just dive in. So here we have Realize Operations. And oh, I'm actually getting a notification that someone needs something. Tina is actually asking me to look into a specific VM. Let's have a look at why this is not reachable using SSH. So here we are in Virilash Operations, and let's have a look at that specific VM that Tina was asking about. So open up the dashboard to have a look at the metrics and the alerts that might be open. First glance, this all looks okay, so let's troubleshoot this using the troubleshooting workbench to get a little bit more information, so around events and property changes and anomalous metrics, but not a lot here. So let's widen the scope a little bit to include the, uh, the surrounding objects of this VM. And we can actually see that there's a BGP neighbor alert here on this specific NSX edge. So let's have a closer look because I've been taught by my networking colleagues that BGP is critical for networking operations. You can actually see that VNI has sent out this alert for this edge. And now what I'm doing is I'm, I'm actually launching directly into VNI and, and having a look at the, uh, the NSX edge dashboard inside VNI for this. So this lists the, the traffic patterns, uh, the configuration, etc. But we can also have a deep dive into the actual uh, message itself. So in this case, you can see that there is a specific IP address that is down when it comes to the BCP neighborship for this edge. So now that I've discovered that there's a BGB problem on the upstream of this VM that Tina was asking about, I can actually feed that back into Tina's question and then also escalate it to the, uh, the networking team with specific information because I now know that a specific IP address, that .100 IP address is, is down when it comes to BGP on this edge by looking at a combination of realized operations and realized network insight. Now let's look at another scenario where another colleague has contacted me about intermittent network access loss from one of their falling at home appliances. And again, I'm going to be using the viewpoint of the VI admin who uses Freelance Operations Manager as their primary troubleshooting tool. Let's dive in. So again, I'm going to be looking at the VM dashboard. So bringing up the folding at home 01 VM in this case, as that was the one that my colleague has been complaining about. And we don't see a lot here except for the CPU, but that's expected. So let's use the troubleshooting workbench again to get a better overview of all the events, the property changes and the metrics. So as we can see, we have a big spike in network traffic here. So I actually want to get a closer look on this traffic, where it's coming from. So what I can do is I can go back to the VM dashboard and then use the integration to directly uh, open up the, um, the the traffic details within Virialize Network Insight. So now it takes me back to VRNI and actually loads up the network flows that go through this, uh, this VM. One of them is taking my attention as it's a pretty big spike and it looks to be between two VMs. So in this case, we've got the source VM. It's, it's the, the network flow is coming from the, uh, the 02 folding at home VM. And it's talking over HTTP to um, the folding at home 01 VM. So that's not supposed to happen. So I can go back and take a look at the uh, the folding at home 2 VM. Maybe it has been compromised and it's it's trying to attack the, uh, the 01 uh, VM in this case. Just by looking at the VM dashboard within Realize Operations, Realize Operations itself says that there's a problem or a big spike in the, uh, the networking traffic uh, for that VM. And then I can go back into Realize Network Insight in context and then have a look at the exact flows that flow through that, uh, to that VM and pinpoint the actual problem really quickly.